Hello, everyone, and good afternoon, or good morning, or good night, whatever time it is where you are. Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Real Estate Playbook. I'm not sure what number this is. I think it's 46, 47. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, thanks for joining us nonetheless. We have a special guest for you today. She comes all the way from somewhere. I'm not sure where, <laughs> but I appreciate her coming on a Sunday. Her name is Erin Byer. How are you, Erin? Hey, Paul. I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thanks Happy for Happy Sunday. Asking. Happy Sunday yes. to you as well. These always get recorded on Sundays these days, so this is my Sunday routine, basically, at this point. <laughs> That's because Paul's a rock star. That's, That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's exactly why. Mm -hmm. That's what my mom tells me, too. <laughs> Good for you and her. <laughs> Absolutely true. So Aaron, um, you are not the traditional guest in the sense that we usually have like agents themselves on right. here. Although occasionally, as we've done in the past, we'll have office staff, you know, just people that can offer different perspectives. Yet sure. yours is one that we have not had yet. So Yay. I'm excited. Um, Aaron is uh, with the Bear Home Loan team with EMM Loans. She is the VP of Retail Sales. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, for people out there that are unsure of what it is that you do, and or what your company does. Sure. How would you explain kind of your position and or how you got your start in that role yep. and how you got to where you are today? Okay, absolutely. So we'll kind of take that piece by piece. Yeah. Um, so who we are, we're basically residential lenders. Um, so we work in the mortgage world. Um, so we do residential financing. You know, we can get into the details of one to four units. Um, but kind of the, the, the long and short of it is, you know, we help people buy homes. We help people buy homes. We help people manage the, the financing of their homes. Um, and we love our company. Uh, company's really great. We have a really great team uh, that all kind of works together very closely to service our clients and our, our referral partners. Um, and so what else can I tell you about that <laughs> in terms of how I got my start and what my role is? So, um, so what my role is, is I have this cool, fancy title. Yay, right? <laughs> but what it means... Um, is that I'm, I'm responsible for a branch. Uh, we have a branch here uh, that's located in the Tampa area. And I basically kind of oversee and make sure that, you know, we're doing what we say that we're going to do, that we're providing great service, that our customers are happy, our referral partners are happy, and uh, we're kind of doing business in a certain style, uh, which is really important to me, mm -hmm. which is, you know, caring yeah. You know, that we care about what we do and that, you know, it's it's not just um, numbers on paper that, you know, that real estate is is part of people's lives. It's a huge thing in people's lives. Yeah. Um, and treating it that way is really important to me and, and our, you know, kind of branch culture and, you know, making sure that we're taking care of our realtor partners because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's how they make their living. That is true. You know, so yeah. if the deal doesn't close, you know, they've they can waste time for nothing. And, and all of those things are really important, you know, to me as a person. So I kind of try to make sure that, you know, throughout the, the transaction, whether it be from the start of the conversation all the way through to closing, that, you know, that that thread is in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so in terms of how I got my start, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll, we'll give you a 30-second history here. Um, my background is... Um, is in business development and marketing, and I spent mm, marketing. Yes, Woo! <laughs> um, I, I I still own the business. I, I have a marketing business um, that kind of uh, is, is a smaller operation that sits in the background. But uh, for twelve years, I worked with small businesses and individuals to develop websites, graphics, um, you know, product development, service development. So kind of just overall helping people build their businesses is, yeah. is really what I specialized in. Um, I have a degree in finance and international business. I won't get into how I got into marketing, but whatever, <laughs> right? It, it's, it's important to have the backstory because um, when I came into this industry, I knew nothing about loans and, and nothing about real estate in general. And, yeah. and really kind of what, what brought me into the real estate world was I didn't know how to buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> like it was that simple. I didn't know how to buy a house, and um, I was living on Martha's Vineyard, which is a um, a vacation island off of the coast of Massachusetts. And you nice. know, the cheapest real estate there was you know outside of of my reality. Oh yeah, at I the time, imagine. yeah. And being self employed, <laughs> and you know, uh, all that comes along with finances with self employed. It just wasn't on my my radar. Um, so when I moved down here to Florida, I kind of looked around. I'm like, wait a minute, like normal people own homes here, yeah. you know, <laughs> like. What's up with that? I want in. Um, 
And I made a friend uh, that was a neighbor who was a real estate agent, and I would kind of badger her, like, hey, how do I do this? What do I do? Um, and she was like, you know, I, I see how you work, and you work really hard. Like, you should be a loan officer. I'm like, a loan what? Well, who? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what Is she's there a badge about. or, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't really like working for people. I like working with people. I like helping people. And long story short, I ended up looking into it. I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is something I can do. And uh, it was kind of, I'm an over-learner. So, you know, instead of taking someone's word for it, I'd rather learn all about it um, and then kind of figure out how to do it. So that's that's kind of the, the ancient history. Um, so when I entered the market uh, as a loan officer, I went and got a license and did all that stuff. Um, I started kind of calling around to different jobs that were like, you need five years experience. And I was like, hey, listen, <laughs> I don't I don't have any experience in this world, but I know a lot about business. I know a lot about marketing. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jaron Miller at, at Cross Country at that time picked up the phone and he's like, you know, this sounds interesting. You know, that's me. And I'm like, OK, great. Um, and long story short, uh, Jaron and I kind of came together as a team in the very beginning, and I worked on the marketing side. And I kind of approached the business like, okay, uh, these folks are, are, if I approach realtors and individuals looking to buy homes as, as my clients, just like I would in business development, um, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just a different kind of kind of angle, different goal. Um, so with that being said, I, I, I approached realtors like, hey, let me help you build your business. You know, and I kind of employed my marketing skills um, and, and development skills to kind of help them to close transactions. And the rest is kind of ancient history. That path worked really well. I mean, who doesn't want help? And at that time, yeah. I'm not charging them. I'm just kind of saying, hey, let me help you. It's like and a consultant. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm consulting for them. I'm doing their loans. I'm doing a great job. And to this day, the very first realtor that I ever closed a deal with, I still do business with. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that's kind of the, the thirty foot backstory. Um, and I just think housing is important. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's a huge thing, and I and I think, um, you know, we know that owning real estate and 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 kind of building wealth in life, um, either you do it or you don't. Yeah. And it's not very accessible. You know, people don't necessarily know how to do it. So, uh, you know, I, I try to, because I was that person. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, <laughs> you know, so I, I really enjoy helping people. And I, I really enjoy, you know, kind of helping people reach their goals, you know, both on the, the realtor side as well as the client side, which is, it's really fulfilling and I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's exciting. That's, um, I think that's a great mindset to have. That's actually something that comes up on here a lot is the attitude that you have of like mm -hmm. wanting to help people. Yeah. Um, I can tell that that's been a big driving force in your career. For sure. So my question for you is, and I've asked this on here before, but I'm interested to hear your perspective uh, from someone who's not a realtor. Mm -hmm. In the industry in general, whether it be in a position like yours or as an agent or whatever, how important do you think it is to have an attitude like that where you constantly just want to help people? So I guess you know, how important is it is, is, a, is kind of a moving target, right? Because right. if you have that attitude, you know, your, the, the result of your work comes out one way. And if you don't have that attitude, your result it comes out another way. Yeah, absolutely. You can, I think you can be successful both ways, but ultimately, um, those who really care, it's like, you know, hey, 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 I'm on vacation <laughs> every single day because I love my occupation. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. That's true. You know, and, and I think that ultimately real estate is a people is a people game. It mm. is. And and when people really truly feel that you care, um, you get a lot more done. Yeah. You know, and you have a lot more happy people around you. You know, it's it's complicated. Real estate's complicated. Absolutely. So ultimately, you know, the the more that you can, you know, have that vibe of caring in what you do, um, the better off you are. Yeah, for sure. You know, so it benefits you and your uh, whoever you're working benefits with. Benefits really. you, benefits their clients, um, and it just puts good juju out there. You know, and we it, love good juju. We love good juju, right? <laughs> and good juju, you know, creates transactions. It does, yeah. You know, and, and honestly, that that's why I'm sitting here to, with you today. Yeah. You know, because I had a realtor who I'd worked with um, for years before she came over to 54. And when she came over, she's like, I have my lender. I like who I work mm -hmm. with. Um, and, and we had a road that we walked down to, which leads me to this path. And it was because, you know, that I care about her and her clients and her transactions um, that leads here. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I think it, you just, it opens a lot more opportunity when you care. And honestly, like if you don't care, maybe you want to go find something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> go find something else you care about. That's usually where we land when we have this discussion yeah. on here where it's like, yeah, you could, you could probably do fine if you're not, you know, someone like yourself, but, um, you're not going to last very long. Maybe you're better meant for something else. No. And, yeah. and, and a lot of the feedback that I get, I mean, even with just clients who maybe have spoken to another lender, um, and I get on the phone with them and I kind of go through the, the, you know, cause I, t- I take the approach of in- educating them during the conversation. Mm-hmm. They're like, geez, you're completely different. Like, you know, this other guy I talked to was just completely like robotic and cut and dry. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And, and I kind of give them the origin story. I'm like, well, I, you know, it's cause I didn't know how, so mm-hmm. I'm always happy to explain a little extra for people. You know, and people really appreciate that. Well, that's awesome. I'm yeah. sure I would if I yeah. was in a... On the flip side of the transaction. Hey, we ever need us, Paul. Even if you just with hey. questions, you want to chat, <laughs> we're here for you, you know? That's what I always say. I'm so lucky that when it does come time for me to buy a house, I know so many people yeah, that can help. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Get you on that path, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Aaron, that's awesome. I'm glad to uh, hear your origin story because I, did, I didn't know any of that. Yeah, thank you um, for asking. Of course. You and I can relate in that we we studied something different in college and yet both ended up in marketing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. funny how that happens, right? It is right? funny how that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking of marketing, talking about the market itself, mm-hmm. um, you are someone who I'm sure has a lot of insight as to the current trends and sure. you see the shifts, um, yeah. more than most. So could you sort of tell us a little bit about what you're seeing these days, mm-hmm. how the market conditions might be affecting your business, any type of insight you have sure. there? No, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're coming out of a very unique time in real estate. This is true. Um, where, you know, it just kind of went bonkers, yeah. you know, it was bonkers, <laughs> you know, that's the only way, <laughs> the only way to describe it. it. Yeah. Um, you know, money was super cheap. In other words, rates were very low, um, and equity was very high. So you had this, you know, very frenzied moment of, of real estate where, you know, the people are cashing on their equity, you know, buying in cash and, or, you know, selling their homes and getting into new ones. And, you know, this, this, sort of explosion went up with, with prices. Um, and we, we experienced a time that was very difficult for buyers, um, very difficult for buyers agents where, you know, there was 20, 30 offers on every home. And, you know, if you didn't have the cash to make up an appraisal gap, um, you know, to pay up and over to waive appraisal, um, you kind of got locked out of the market, Yeah. you know, and, and my buyers agents that were in the market prior to that, um, they had a really hard time, you know, like for instance, here's, here's a good, um, statistic I would put out prior to this moment, I would put out, you know, whatever, 10 pre-approvals and I would get eight contracts back. Mm -hmm. You know, when COVID hit, I was putting out 20 and getting two or three back. Yeah. So that was kind of an indicator that like, okay, cool. Well, we just have to go. Um, and it was kind of, um, I don't want to say sad, but kind of sad, right. honestly, because, you know, the, the first time buyer market folks who don't have big savings, who are just trying to, you know, move up in life from renting to owning, it was really challenging for them and, and they got discouraged and, and that, you know, it kind of hurts your heart a little yeah. bit, you know, where it's like, oh, you don't have 40 K in the bank. You know, I, it's going to be tough, yeah. you know, but the good news is, is that is now shifting. Um, you know, and I think that was kind of part of the design as rates are coming up. Um, we're seeing the market open quite a bit now. Um, and, and kind of what I forecasted when, when the rates started going up was that we're going to be getting into need buyers, people who need to buy. So, you know, whether they're first time buyers, relocators, um, things of that nature, Mm -hmm. uh, those are really who we're going to see in this market more and, and it's happening and it's great. And, and why it's great is because, you know, prices are starting to come down a little bit. The, the seller's side is is starting to soften where we're seeing seller's concessions again, Yeah, you know, which is fantastic because that doesn't mean that you need a million dollars to buy the house, you know? Yes. My God. (laughs) Um, and that's huge because, you know, traditionally in a normal market, you know, if, if you can do down payment assistance, um, and get sellers concessions, you can walk into buying a house with very little cash, Yeah, you know, and that just didn't exist for some time. Um, also that, uh, different loan types are being accepted. So Mm. that's exciting. You know, we experienced a time like a freeze where if you couldn't qualify for for a conventional loan, you were out, Yeah, you know, and that, again, it's really sad because, uh, you know, FHA buyers, but even, even particularly our VA buyers, Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that was really hard because our VA buyers, I mean, 
our lifestyle is a function of our military folks going exactly. out and holding us down. Yeah. You know, so so locking them out of the housing market is just, you know, not cool. Tragic, so yeah. anyway, good news. We are now moving out of that. And and what I'm seeing is, you know, sellers still think that, you know, the market's unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> and I think, you know, they're getting a little bit of a wake up call. Um, so definitely now is the time to sell it if that's what you're thinking. Um, and then what we're seeing is, you know, they start to get it. Okay, my house has been on the market now for a week, two weeks. Price drop. We're seeing price drops everywhere. Starting um, to sweat. Yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> then we can build in seller's concessions and, and really kind of, so I work with the agents pretty closely to, you know, try to structure the deal in a way that is, you know, most beneficial for everybody. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I think that's about it. So good news. We're getting FHA under contract, VA under contract, down payment assistance is back. Um yeah, so that's kind of you know the the general overview. Well, I love good news. Yeah, love yeah, to hear it's that. great. It's 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 fantastic. Um, we're really happy to see good normal market activity happening. I'm happy as well. Yeah, <laughs> high five. Let's do a high five. Woo! I like high five. <laughs> I hope most people out there are also happy. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Um. So, Aaron, you mentioned something in there that uh, I wanted to ask you about, which is, um, you said this is becoming a little bit more easy for them now, but uh, people that are first time home buyers, mm -hmm. that's a overwhelming situation, yeah. right? For them, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, what kinds of things or advice rather do you offer first time home buyers to kind of ease some of that sweat that they have going into this? Honestly, just call us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it, it does. It's a good start. Yeah, yeah. Th I mean, that's it. It, it feels. Um, feel scary, you yeah. know, who is this, these lone people and what do they want? And, you know, there's this kind of like underlying feeling of like, I'm not good enough and my credit's not good enough yeah. and I don't have enough cash. Um, and I kind of invite people to throw that out the window, you know, because the truth of it is, is that, you know, um, it's not that hard to qualify for a home loan. Mm -hmm. And if you're not there yet, if, if you can educate yourself on how to get there, you can get there. Yeah. You know, and as long as you get there someday, it's way better than never, you know? So yeah. I, I think, you know, calling us and talking to us and just kind of having that upfront conversation, you might be surprised. You mm. might already qualify, yeah, absolutely. you know, and if you don't, you know, we'll kind of help you and say, okay, cool. Yeah. Your credit's a 480. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's not going to work, but you know, let's, let's take, take, uh, take some steps in that direction. And, you know, we kind of try to help people to walk into that, um, so that would be, they can definitely call us. We're happy to help, but also, you know, just kind of do your research online. Um, you can take a look and see kind of what the general, you know, and I can throw credit scores and stuff at you, but I mean, yeah. ultimately it's more just like have a goal, envision it. Be laser focused. And just go, Yeah. you know, go pick up the phone, you know, call us, start looking online, um, put in an application. I think the sooner that you put in an application to get pre-approved, the better off you are. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you just made me think of something else. So last week I had read this article from FloridaRealtors.org. Shout out to FloridaRealtors.org. Hey. Hey. Um, and I believe the title was like uh, tips for first time home buyers or renters who are priced out of the current market. Yeah. Just a couple generalized tips. And there was something on there that I've heard so much from the real estate community mm -hmm. at large. Um, the piece of advice was basically framed as like avoid large purchases or yeah, unnecessary yeah. large purchases yeah. is actually what they said. Yeah. Um, and I hear so much from mostly realtors, never really people <laughs> in your, in your role, um, <laughs> about like the, you know, you're almost at the closing table and, <laughs> oh, my client bought a car. So is that really a, a big a problem thing. that, that people, um, sort of Mike just made a weird noise. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, you guys see that a lot? Is that something that people should really we be don't. more focused on? I mean, here, here's the thing. Um, we personally, on our, on our team, we don't see that a lot. Okay. We also, you know, actively manage our transactions. Gotcha. You know, so so our, we kind of set up a relationship where, you know, they can call us anytime. You can call me, text me, I don't care if it's Saturday, Sunday, the middle of the night. As a client, you need something, we're here. So our clients will reach out to us and kind of let, like, let us know. Um, like, hey, I have to buy a car. Is this okay? Can I put this on my credit card? Can yeah. you? So it's really the open line of communication. But to answer your question, absolutely, does it happen? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've had people quit the job that we're using oh, for no. income like three days before closing. I've had people, yeah, in there. go buy a tractor. <laughs> I'm like, bro, tractor. did you, did you, you couldn't wait a week to buy that tractor? tractor. Like, come on. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, like <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've done some, some wild things. One time <laughs> this guy didn't have enough cash to close and we had him sell snakes. Snakes? <laughs> 
Welcome to Florida, people. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sold snakes to get enough cash to, to close on his deals. Wow. So, yeah. And I mean, here's the thing is that, you know, things like that happen. And ultimately, like, that's why people love us. And not to plug us again, but I'm going to. Do it. Because we we jump in. And if there is a problem like that, we, we will fix it. Yeah. I will jump in and fix it. Because, we'll sell snakes, baby. Dude, we will sell snakes. <laughs> you, you know what I did with that lady who quit her job? Huh. I made her go back and get her job back. <laughs> and guess oh, what man. she did? She got it back. Absolutely. Ooh, look mm -hmm. at that. Yep. Sometimes all you need is a little nudge. Sometimes, in the right hey, sometimes you just you just need some some active management <laughs> and some focus. Like, what are we doing here, people? Oh, we're buying house. Okay, great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, because ultimately, look, in, in a transaction, it's it's buyer, it's buyer's agent. It's seller, it's seller's agent, and th those are all the stakeholders. Yeah, they're all depending on the lender mm -hmm. to get it done. If we don't get it done, all the plans, you know, the thing that the realtor was gonna buy, and the seller who may be buying another home or buying their kid, whatever it is, and 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 the buyer who's moving out of their house, mm -hmm. it's it's not just like a, oh yeah, I'm gonna go buy a pair of shoes. Casual. No, it's like a, <laughs> I, I'm going to be homeless in three weeks. Exactly. This this is so the, the the gravity there and the level of importance, you know, you have to actively communicate with them so they don't do those things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that's kind of the, <laughs> the big long way around your answer. <laughs> no, no, that was awesome. Um, it sounds like you're saying uh, a big value um, proposition, I suppose, that you guys have is like keeping the consumer informed because yes. a lot of times people, you know, no offense to anyone out there who's like this, but they think they know everything. Whereas you have the experience to sort of be like, listen, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big well, and, of you guys and ultimately, you know, one of the things that, that I find works really well, and I think people really enjoy this about working with us is we, we keep them in control. Yeah. Like you, you, ultimately we work for them, right? We're going to give you advice. We're going to tell you the best way to get this done. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make an alternative decision, it's your life, right? <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you want to blow up the transaction and go ride your tractor and live on your tractor. Feel free, bro. <laughs> like that's cool. Like, uh, but you know, if, if you ask me that question at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday night, I will answer you, Yeah. you know, because I know that you may need that because mm -hmm. so you don't wake up Sunday and buy a tractor. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you never know. And as a result, I'm sure your phone is blowing up constantly, right? Uh, it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes and no. Um, I find that people, uh, people respect you, Yeah. you know, and, and, and they'll, they'll ask and they'll kind of give you the time and space, but ultimately it's, it's. It's just the availability that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's just being like their emotional support animal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's really what it is. I say, you know, real estate's more, uh, you know, 90%, you know, uh, therapist, 10% mm -hmm. like functional transaction. <laughs> Again, one of those things that comes up here all the time is is the uh, part-time psychiatrist yes. role of people in the real estate yes. industry. Because we are holding your hand. We yeah. are like one of your like closest people in your world mm -hmm. for, you know, whether it's the you know, 30 to 45 days while we're working through this transaction yeah. mm -hmm. interesting yeah so it's like you guys are the pilot but the uh you know the consumer's calling the shots on where you go but yes yeah <laughs> yeah they are and, and 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 they don't have a map and they have no idea what's going on you know and your job is to be like here's the map right here are your options what do you want to do? Exactly. And at least you know how to fly the plane. Right? Yeah. 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 So, so when people feel like, you know, you're, they're, you're telling them what to do. I mean, my, my famous line is like, listen, I work for you. Yeah. I'm here to provide information so you can make informed decisions. But That's at the awesome. end of the day, we do whatever you want. So we're empowering people. Yes, we are yeah. on, a, on a very deep level. Cause I, like I mean, owning real estate and, and being able to build portfolios. I mean, if you look at back on history, it's one of the strongest ways to build wealth. Oh yeah. It's tried and true. If not like number one, don't quote me on that. Cause I don't know. I'm not an economist, but I'm going to guess it's up there. <laughs> it is. It's a thing. <laughs> awesome. So Aaron, we have talked a lot about you, but I have some more questions about you. Dun, dun, dun. I know. Cue the suspenseful music. <laughs> uh, so these are, I always call them my job interview questions, mm -hmm. but I just like to get a little insight here. So, uh, throughout your career, Aaron, what would you say has been your greatest strength or something to you that has allowed you to succeed? I think my greatest strength is perseverance. Right on. Is is the 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 willingness and to go the extra mile and mm -hmm. go to the end of the earth to get something done. Love that. Yeah. For better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that's why uh, you're taking phone calls late at night, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold on, I got a I got a client right on. No, ring, 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 ring. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, and then on the flip side of that coin, 
everybody has weaknesses, obstacles, yeah. things they must overcome. Yeah. Uh, what's been one years and is it something that maybe you're still working on or something that you've overcome already? So this is going to sound really weird and you might hate me. For Love this. it. Um, but it's probably the same as my strength. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually how it goes. Right? Know, the biggest weakness is also the perseverance. Um, because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, it's, you, it's better left alone, Yeah, you know, but it, it, you, you got to go for it. And in my mind, you know, if something gets put in your path, you know, it's, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. So let's just take it and run with it. Exactly. Um, so I think one of my downsides is I, I work a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I work really, really hard. Um, and the end result makes it worth it. Yeah, but absolutely. It, in the moment, it, it can feel sometimes overwhelming. I was going to say, I'm sure your clients appreciate the uh, the tenacity. Yes. Yeah. They really do, mm -hmm. and they appreciate the fact that you know we're we're there to hold their hand, and I think that you know just like we talked about the caring thing. Yeah. Like they get that immediately on the phone. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, these headphones keep sliding off my big head. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> No, you just made me think of, um, you know, broken record here, but another thing that comes up quite often is uh, work-life balance. And we don't have to get too much into that, yeah. but I'm curious if you have any just like surface level tips for maintaining sort of a work-life balance. <sighs> Probably not the best person to ask. That. <laughs> I asked uh, Allison Bresciani and she's like, yeah, don't ask me because yeah, I haven't taken a vacation. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, what are tips for work-life balance? Um, I would say uh, having goals. Sure. You know, and when I say having goals, you know, we, we think about money goals or, you know, whatever personal goals, but kind of, you know, doing this envisioning moment where you're like, you know, what do I see for my life? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I want my life to be? I have three kids, so I'm, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, I you know? can imagine. Yeah. So we're, so we're running this side of the world and I have three kids. Um, <laughs> so, and, and, you know, everyone's kind of even back to, you know, before when I owned businesses and um, kind of did things like that, they're like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, I don't know how I do it either. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I really don't. It's, it's just, you just put one foot in front of the other. Um, and I think one of the things that I can say is, um, you know, focus on the next step. Don't focus on 15 steps down the road. You know, focus on, okay, what can I do next? Yeah. And if you have a goal in your life, whether it be to spend more time with family or to build your business or fill in the blanks, spend more personal time with yourself, um, just, just, okay, what can I do today to make that happen? You know, what can I do in the next couple moments to, you know, fulfill that goal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some saying that you just reminded me of, and I think it's Buddhist, but don't quote me on that. That's my third don't He's quote me quotable. on that He's not quotable. He's just not. You know? but, but we love him. We're, we're swinging for the fences. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're making it. I but think he's right in everything, though. It, it, <laughs> it, it's basically something like, uh, you know, the future is a myth and the past is uh, yeah. something. Be, be here now. You get the vibe. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of remind me of that there. I think that's a great, great, great mindset to have. And so there's a song, you know, you know that uh, it was an old rock song, like it's all right now. You baby, lost me there. But... It's, oh, that's because you're a baby. <laughs> oh wait, yes, okay, it's all you have me. Right now. Just so, so that I believe that what they're talking about is is being in the present. Yeah, it's all right now. It exists right here, right now. You know, so I think if if you can kind of compartmentalize your mind to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, and really sort of have a vision of what you want your life to be. That's really the best way to, you know, sort of manage your work-life balance. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't know if if that's like a tried and true, quotable way of doing things, but, but it, it works, works for, for me. You. There you go. It does. Jinx. It really does. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, work. <laughs> oh, me a coke. There you go. Yeah. So, Aaron, um, it sounds like you really love what you do. I do. I respect that. Mm -hmm. If you weren't, however, in your current role, what might you see yourself doing alternatively? So I had this vision. So <laughs> this is kind of fun. I, I thought I'd share this with you. That's why I, don't, I, like this I, don't question. If, I don't know if you're too young for this, but <laughs> uh, back in back in the '80s, <laughs> which I, we know, yeah, back in the '80s. Was, so they had these posters um, with like uh, big mansions and Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and there were little lights that lit up. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no. Okay, all right. So it, it, it was a thing. Yeah, yeah, it was like these posters of like you know this luxurious lifestyle. Um, and I remember being a kid and looking at the poster, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's me. That's awesome. <laughs> That's my house and my cars, you know? And, and I, I kind of always had this, like, vision of, like, where I was going in life. Um, so I guess to, to answer that question, you know, what would I be doing alternatively? I mean, at, in college, I was like, yeah, you know, studying international business, I'm like, I'm going to fly all over the world and do business all over the place and be <laughs> on private jets and, you know, all that stuff. Mm. Um, then I had kids, but... <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, you know, I, I think that that's kind of the, the goal uh, or, or my thought. What would I be doing otherwise? I mean, I really like doing business. I really like wheeling and dealing. I like, um, you know, kind of helping people to get to their goals. I think my, my bigger picture is, because it's hard for me to say what would I be doing otherwise because this yeah, is what yeah. I do, yeah. you know, live, live it, breathe it, eat it, sleep it. Um, but I think that the bigger picture for me um, is passive income. Right. You know, is creating creating enough passive income to where I don't have to work. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think that's that's kind of the goal for me personally. And I think helping people to kind of see that that's an option. Um, I really like to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I really like that and kind of helping people from, OK, you buy one home. Now you have one. OK, cool. What can you do from there? You can buy another one. Stack it up. Yeah, and stack them up and rent out the last one, right? And then what's what's next from there, you know? Uh, and not everybody wants to do that. Right. But for those that do, to make that accessible is exciting. And you too can be on that poster. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. I love that you're approaching the, uh, the way you interact with your clients with that mindset of like, you know, something that you've always wanted to do, mm -hmm. something that you think is a great way to build wealth. Yeah. And you're like, listen, you can do it too. Yeah. As they say. And some people just, they just need that. Mm -hmm. They just need a yes, you can. Yeah. You know, and, and, it, and it might be like, a, okay, I kind of say, okay, listen, just give me the application and it's either going to be a right now thing or it might be a six month thing, might be a 12 month thing. But like, if we know now what's going on, good news, we can make a plan to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which where, you know, if you don't put in the application for another three years, okay, well now you're <laughs> three years down the road and you've paid, you know, uh, some ridiculous amount of money in rent, you know. You bought 20 tractors. Who knows? <laughs> 20 yeah. tractors and you're driving all of them at once. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, one thing that comes to mind with that is, you know, people, people in renting and I, I'll just, throw this in here um people are like oh the interest rates have gone higher i don't know you know i'm just gonna wait and i'm like okay cool so how much are you paying in rent a month oh, too much two thousand dollars right i'm like wow okay all right cool um and over the course of a year that's twenty four thousand dollars right well guess what that's a hundred percent interest mm -hmm. <laughs> so six percent a hundred percent six percent is better yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very good point. Very yeah. good point. Plus, generally, uh, the homeowner is passing on their financial hurt to the renter, you know? Yeah. But is it really hurt? That's the question. That's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> they just figure, you know, this will work. I'm gonna Unlikely, because if it yeah. hurts, they're going to off it. That's a great point. That's you a know? great point. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're sitting there, you know, getting a month, uh, a healthy margin. A little off stipend. Of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good point. Very yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, Aaron, um, we kind of blew through those questions here, but I know we can dive pretty deep on this last question. Sure. Um, if you, so we always end with this and frame it however you want, but if you could give advice to real estate agents out there, what would your mm -hmm. advice be? What would my advice be to real estate agents? Um, I would, part of it is make sure you have a solid team around yeah, you. Absolutely. You know, a solid team of partners. Um, you know, your home inspectors, even contractors, um, you know, fill in the blanks, uh, even appraisers, you know, that you have on dial, you know, have a really solid network that you can access because you don't need to know everything. Mm -hmm. You just need to know who to call. I love that. You know what I mean? Make that the clip right yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. Like you, <laughs> you really don't. I mean, that's, that's like rule number one in sales is like, you know, I will get that answer for you Yeah. and have somebody on dial who you know is going to pick up, you know, is going to take care of you. Um, because that makes all the difference in the world. Real estate's extremely complicated. There's like 196 pieces to a real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't need to know everything, but having a good solid partner um, sort of portfolio of partners yeah. uh, is huge. Um, what else? Don't be scared. You know, I think, I think not being scared is, is really helpful. You know, deliver the bad news first. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, okay, things may not always go well. But the sooner you can approach it, the faster you can, you know, get through it and find a solution. Absolutely. You know, so I, I would say that. Um, use me as a lender because I'm awesome. Call her up. <laughs> no, no, and I, let, me, let me not overstep. But I mean, have if f have a solid lending partner for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, have someone that you you know know like and trust. And the trust factor is huge because, you know, you don't want to go driving around in circles, um, on a pre-approval that you get under contract mm -hmm. and three weeks later, a week before closing, you find out the pre-approval was no good. 
Whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you, you get a pre-approval from another lender who is not your preferred lender. You call them. Yeah. You call them. And if they're not accessible, okay, <laughs> yellow flag, right? Maybe red. We're not sure. It, not sure, but it's yellow, right? <laughs> okay. Yellow. Call them again and, and just make sure that you have an open line of communication because ultimately where you spend your time is how you eat. Yeah. You know, because in this business, you eat what you kill. You're, you're not just, you know, you're not in an hourly wage or not this and that. So your time is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. So knowing where to spend that time is huge. And if you're, you know, if you have a solid pre approval that you know is good, great. Because then you get, yeah, sure, I'll take you to see 25 houses. <laughs> These days it's not as bad, but... Um, <laughs> But ultimately, you know that all the time that you've spent is going to be paid on, you know, which is important because um, there are definitely lenders out there that, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, looks great. Here's your prequalification, you know, and they may have a year in the business. And, you know, I get phone calls often from my realtor partners and they're like, oh, my God, Aaron, you know, dumpster fire, dumpster fire, help. Um, and I'm like, OK, calm down and kind of work through it. I just picked up, you know, something that a, a lender had for three and a half months. Couldn't close it, couldn't close it, couldn't close it. Dragging the feet. Eh? Yeah. And one of the, one of the, an amazing agent that I really like here at 54 brought it over to me. He's like, Aaron, can you help? Two and a half weeks later, we closed. Come on. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just an issue of not all lenders are made equal. Not all partners are made equal. Unfortunately. You know, yes. and, and, and find someone you like yeah. on a personal level, you know, cause it's, uh, what I find is, you know, if you vibe with somebody and they do good work, Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because I find like real estate's really social. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We kind of touched on it up top, but it's just all about the relationships that you have with yes. your partners, your clients, your peers, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we kind of like, you know, partners that you, you start with in the industry or, you know, that you just kind of vibe with, you know, it come, it builds into friendships. Yeah. It's not just business anymore. You know, now you're like homies and you do things together. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, everybody's like that here. I see the Facebook pictures all the time. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't know they kind of hung out outside yeah. of work. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're all like, you know, commiserating. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I, it's, um, so that's really nice. Um, other advice, just do it. Nike. Don't think about it. Yeah. Just do it. That actually came from, and now I'm going to get into the don't quote me. Do um, it. but there's a guy, uh, there's this, there's a speech from, from the eighties. Again, we're going to bring back the eighties. Um, but he's like, you want to go make money? Just do it. Right. You, you want a better job? Do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want you want to go out and, and, and build wealth? Do it. Great. Don't sit here and complain to me about it. You just go do it. It's not going to come to you, basically. No. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, if, if it does, that that's fantastic. That's awesome. But, you know, I think not having fear and, and just doing it, you're going to fail. Absolutely. But that's how you learn in this business. For sure. You know, you have to fall on your face and fall on your face. And then the, the, the key of it is it's cool to fall. But... Look at why you fell and never do it again. Tie your shoelaces. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like you, you took you took a pre-approval. And and for the newer agents out there who who don't, you know, just getting started or whatever and haven't had this experience yet, you know, it'll come and and you'll get a bad pre-approval and the deal will fall apart. And and you know, hopefully we can save you from that. But you know, and then you'll you'll know what how the burn of how that feels. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta make the mistake first though yes. to realize that, right? Well, no, it's like Hopefully Eleanor, not, Eleanor but, Roosevelt, yeah. you know, you, you learn, learn from others. There you go. You know, learn from others' mistakes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there anything, you touched on a lot of things, but uh, is there anything else that people should look for in like lending people, real estate agents, mm -hmm. should look for in a, a, a lending partner other than, you mentioned like no liking and trusting, having a good relationship, open yeah. lines of communications. Yeah, yeah. Are the, would you say those are the big three or is there anything else those that are, works in those there? Those are, um, those are good. Um, also, you know, creativity. Because lending is not a black and white thing. I've um, noticed that, yeah. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of lot of lenders out there that it is black and white. You don't fit in box. <laughs> no pre approval for you, you know. Where you know I'll, I'll take that same client. And I'm like, okay, cool. Here's here here are the the what can happens. Right. You know. Um, so I would say you know having a lender that has a lot of products. Um, so for you know primary home, investment homes, uh, second homes. Um, there's a lot of a lot of options that the normal lenders don't necessarily know about. Yeah. That the guidelines are there. The, the loans are totally doable. They just, you know, kind of do cookie cutter loans and they don't mm -hmm. know the difference. So having a lender that, you know, is very well versed in guidelines and knowing, you know, how to get stuff done. Um, definitely that picks up the phone and is available. 
big one. Yep, big, huge one. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, you know, pick up your phone. <laughs> yeah, like, please. It's not that hard. Um, <laughs> what else can I say? Um, and, and that, you know, is accountable. Yeah. You know, that when, when you send them, send them a client, that they're taking good care of that client um, and, and that kind of thing. Um, beyond that, I'd say, you know, it's, it's kind of pretty straightforward, you know, and, and also, you know, someone who's going to support you yeah. and help you. You know, I mean, we, we will go, <laughs> we go above and beyond. Like, to, to, it's, it's come down to where, you know, um, I have to reach out to the listing agents. You know, if a transaction is going sideways for whatever reason, you know, we'll jump in. I'll, I'll speak to the listing agents. I'll speak to sellers in some cases, you know, to hold transactions together. So, yeah. like, somebody who's really willing to, like, get down and dirty and hold a transaction together um, is huge. And yeah, you absolutely. won't necessarily know that up front. So, you know, maybe taking advice from another realtor who, you know, has experience with somebody mm. and or just call us. Call them up. <laughs> Call us up. We got you. Yes. Well, speaking of calling Aaron, yeah. first of all, Aaron, thank mm-hmm. you again for coming. We blew through those questions very yeah, quickly. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to be here. You this killed is awesome. It. Thanks, you everybody, it. on a Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for the people out there who might want to call you up, they might want to work mm-hmm. with you or your team, yeah. is there somewhere they can reach you? Yeah, on my cell phone. Ring, ring. Yeah, you just call me. Call me. On the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can text me or call me. Uh, my, my cell phone number is 774. 774- Five six three, five seven six four. Awesome. Um, and we do have team members. I have a few loan officers that are working with us. I have an operations manager. I have all that. But I am happy to take the call. Awesome. Yeah, myself, and and just kind of figure out the best way to, what to do with that. Excellent. Well, yeah. that is the Bear Home Loan Team that with is right. EMM Loans. That is us. And our guest today, Aaron Bear. Thank you again, Aaron. I really appreciate yes, it. Yes, we appreciate you, Miss Paul. We give you another high five. Hey, oh, high fives. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, thanks again. And thank you to 54 for having me. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we absolutely love 54. Yes, um, we do. They do a great job, and uh, we're really excited to be here as a preferred lender. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you guys. Thank you. And I'm sure the team is as well. So, I think so. I think so. I think so. Yeah, They better be. They better be. They love us. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. So thank you for joining us this week. Uh, I Like I said, I don't know what number episode this is, but we're almost at 50. That's pretty right. cool. That huh? is awesome. Pretty cool. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as always, follow us on social media at The Real Estate Playbook. You know the drill. Subscribe, like, whatever you got to do, like, wherever follow, you're listening. Subscribe. Do it. Do it. And um, that's it for me this week, guys. I will see you on the next one and take care.